The goal of Adafruit is to teach people about how cool it is to be an electrical engineer, how much fun it is to make stuff. We design all these cool projects and kits that people really get excited to build. And then by building these kits, they learn the skills that are important for engineering, science, technology, and math. I went to school at MIT and I studied electrical engineering and computer science. And going to school for engineering is a lot of like math, just like really boring differential equations. I mean, I'm really glad I learned that stuff, but it kind of takes a little bit of the soul of fun out of making and building. And so in my spare times, when I should have been working on my thesis, I was actually doing stuff like building my own synthesizers or a little pocket MP3 player or a little light painting toys. And this was kind of something I did just to kind of kick back and relax. But when I posted up these projects online and you know I had a web page, um, I put them on Instructables, people got really excited. They said, this is so cool. I also want to learn how to build my own synthesizer. I also want to learn how to build my own MP3 player in a mint tin. Can you sell me like all the parts so that I can just take it home and like build it sort of like old Heath kit type kits? Um, and I was like, no, I'm busy. I'm in school. Like, leave me alone. Like, I got to do my thesis, and I'm supposed to be working on that right now. But eventually, like, the emails just kept coming in. People saying, like, I really want to build the synthesizer, but it's really hard for me to find one of each part. So I was like, okay, fine. You know, you guys win. So I started making up little kits. And the kits would have a custom circuit board that I would design and maybe some custom firmware or microcode that would go in a microcontroller. And uh, I would ship these kits all over the world to people and um, they would take these kits and follow my instructions. We actually had a beautiful web page that I would have on ladyada.net. Because we had stuff like YouTube or Instructables or you know, Blogger or whatever, they would start taking photos and videos of their projects and sharing them back online. So you'd have a community of people building and sharing and improving these projects. Instead of just designing a box and you get this black box that says void if open, don't tamper, we say please open up, please understand how this works, please uh, do what you want with the code, with the design. And what that does is it brings in all the customers as part of the community. So it's not just me dictating how I think a synthesizer should work, it's everybody else teaming in and saying, hey, I have an idea for how I like to use a synth or a music device or a light painter. I'm gonna make these modifications and post the code or contribute to the forums. Everybody's working together to design really cool stuff. One of our most popular kits is a thing called the Minty Boost. It's a little battery charger for your gadget or you know, music player or GPS. And we don't own every single device out there, but we have so many customers that they'll help me do the testing. They'll go and say, hey, you know, my device doesn't quite work, but I found that if I change this resistor, it does. Awesome, thank you for contributing. We put that back into the instructions so we have an ecosystem of innovation. This is kind of like having a restaurant with a test kitchen, but we also release all the recipes online for free. So you can go to this restaurant, you can eat the food, but then if you really want, you can get the recipe book for free, take it home, and then use those recipes to create your own dishes. And that's kind of what open source hardware is, except instead of food, it's like your gadgets or your TV or your computer. When I look at the maker movement now, what it really reminds me of is all the people who are modifying their hot rods and their cars in the 50s and 60s, sharing all the information in magazines, uh, tips on how to like make their car faster or quieter or louder, and also combine that with the Homebrew Computer Club of the 70s. People getting together in garages, basically maker spaces, designing the computers that we now use every single day, but for them it was just like a crazy hobby they would do on the weekends. What I like to say is whatever makers are doing for fun now is what everybody's going to be doing in 10, 15 years. Every single Saturday at Adafruit, I do a show and tell and a hangout called Ask Engineer. Kids and parents from all over the world, and we really have people from all over, show up and show off their projects. And we have um, kids showing off their custom watches that they've designed from scratch, or they're on a first robotics team and they're sharing off their robot. We actually had a father email us and say, he's been watching the show and tell and ask engineer with his daughter for four years. And she asked him, are there any male engineers? Because all I see on ask the engineers, all these women doing electronics engineering. So I think, you know, you can really make a good example and we are what we celebrate. So if we celebrate all kinds of people doing engineering, all these kids are gonna look and say, hey, I can do engineering, I can have pink hair, I can have a lip ring, I can wear all black and be an engineer, that's cool.